I pick a side? Yes, uh, right here. I think right it's right wonderful. Here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Very, really, really uh, wonderful match, and congratulations to Jamie Hader. First question. Jamie, hi, I'm Denise. I want to ask you, you now you're holding the interim AEW Women's World Champion, and given that the fact that the fans got so behind you and were just so excited to see this possibility, how do you feel about being champion and also how, how much the fans got behind you? Becoming the champion is extremely validating to myself because after working, like everybody works hard in wrestling. Every single wrestler that goes out there, they work hard, they sacrificed. But when it happens to you, it's almost a surreal moment because you never really think it's going to happen. You never think you're going to win a belt at a company. You never think you're going to be signed to a company. You never think you're going to achieve really anything. It's just a pipe dream. But I can't even put into words how I feel right now. It's If my wrestling career ended tomorrow, God forbid, I would be so incredibly happy with everything that I've achieved, and this is definitely the cherry on top of everything. Thanks. Well, Richard WrestleZone, uh, Tony was pretty vocal about how she felt about the interim title being attached. Uh, do you have any similar concerns? And to Tony, you know, you kind of said the other day that you're giving Thunder Rosa a chance to come back. Uh, is this something you're still considering, or you know, does it make it different now that you know Jamie's kind of has her own title reign? Well, it's a, it's a new championship reign, absolutely, and uh, I, you know, have been evaluating that, and it's something we're you know taking under consideration. Certainly, have been trying to give Thunder Rosa every opportunity to come back and defend the championship. It's been a few months now, and uh, when we get a better timeline for a return, I'll have to make a decision about whether. Uh, to continue with the interim or to make uh, the interim champion possibly uh, some kind of an opportunity to become the lineal champion. Thanks, Bill. Evening, Rich Van Pro Wrestling Torch. Uh, my colleague at the Torch, Ken Hawkins, interviewed Tony Storm this week, and they talked a lot about the trust that you all had as roommates. And Tony earlier talked about the trust with folks starting in the dark, moving their way in the main event, semi-main events, championship opportunities. Can you talk about the trust you've earned over the last few years here in the EW? And what does it mean now to sit here as the interim of this year? The trust I've earned, wow. Um, it's kind of a hard one to answer, really, because I think it's just kind of, you're not thinking in your head like, wow, I'm earning all this trust and all this is happening. You just, you just kind of go with the flow. Like, I've been here for just over a year now. And I'd like to think that when I first came in, I'm completely different to how I am now in every single way. So I think not only have I built trust in the company with myself, hopefully, with Tony, the women's division, but I built trust within myself to know that I am capable of doing this, and look what I did. Josh Martinez, iHeartRadio Z100. Um, everyone dreams of becoming a champion when they get into wrestling. Was this feeling exactly what you imagined? Is it different? If so, how different is it? It is actually different. I always imagined myself when I was a kid, I'd be like, <laughs> like crying and it'll all be crazy, but I feel very relaxed. I feel zen. It just feels right, you know? Like you can't, I'm very chill. That's, that's it. I, I thought I would be feeling all these crazy emotions, but I'm like, yeah, I did it. And that's it. Nothing crazy, nothing over the top, no tears, no nothing. It's, like I said earlier, it's validating. So when you feel validated in something that you've worked very hard for, there's no better feeling than that, and it just really puts you at peace. So, hi Jamie, Amy, the name is Russell Gray. First, congratulations on your win, and Thanks. congratulations on a win with the crowd so fully and emphatically behind you. You had mentioned your evolution since when you first appeared in AEW. You are far different from how you were back then, and, and the strengths that you've shown, the talents that you've shown have impressed so many people. And now, you are the interim women's world champion. 
You, however, also have a very close and dear friend in Britt Baker, who has her eyes set on reclaiming that championship. Can you talk a little bit about the dichotomy that you share as friends and as maybe even potential rivals with that Interwomen's World Championship as a teacher? Wow. Um, me and Britt first met, and the first time we wrestled was in some dive bar in London in 2019. First time we met, wrestled, we were at Pro Wrestling Eve, had a really fun match, and from then we just kind of built this friendship after the first match. We really got on well, we clicked. Uh, she went back to America, I went over to Japan, we stayed in contact, and yeah, we just kind of built our friendship from there, and she is the reason I am at AEW. She's the whole reason I'm here. Like, she helped me so much, especially to get where I am today. So having her as a rival for the championship, I completely welcome it. I don't think there's better rivals in the ring than friends or people that you're close to. I think that makes, makes better matches because there's more emotion behind it. If you just wrestle someone you don't really know or you don't have an emotional connection with, then it's just a wrestling match. But when you wrestle someone that you truly care about, everything's on the line. So. I'm totally open to wrestling her anytime. And I would love it. I really would love to wrestle her again. It's been so many years and we've both got so much better. So, please, anytime. <laughs> if she wants it, we That's can do cool. it. There you go. Thank you. Okay, last question. Last one. Hi, Jessica. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the Women's World Championship. Uh, so one of the words I've used to describe your rise um, a lot has been ground swelling. And part of that has to do with the fact that you've had one of the most organic rises um, that the AEW Women's Division has ever seen. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the pressure that kind of comes with? Because uh, in, in a lot of ways, the fans really got you here. The fans really decided Jamie Hayter was, was the people's choice. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the pressure uh, that you might be feeling as champ now to deliver on what the fans have been asking for? I'm definitely a, the kind of person that does the best under pressure. As much as I hate being under pressure, I like to not have stress or be anxious, but that's when I'm at my best. So being a champion, I really think this is going to be an escalation of me improving in the ring, me wanting to and trying to elevate this women's division to what it can be and, and what it will be and what it is. It's only going to keep growing and getting better. So I love every second already of it. I'm feeling the pressure already and I can't wait for it to continue. However long that is, however long I keep hold of this thing, I hope the pressure actually gets harder for me because that's when, that's when I'm going to do my best work. So. Yeah, I, I can't really describe it. It's, it's a lot, but if you want to be a champion, you kind of have to just suck it up and deal with it. And that's what exactly what I'm going to do. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Jamie Hayter. Latest, guys.